Minnesota Military Radio is a weekly public affairs program focusing on the Minnesota National Guard. It's time for Generally Speaking, a weekly message from the Adjutant General, the Minnesota National Guard, Major General Rick Nash. Beyond the Yellow Ribbon Program, Military Community, and the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. We're speaking to Commissioner Larry Shalado from the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. From across the state. Live from the Chan Hassan American Legion Post 580. We're broadcasting from the Minnesota State Fair today. To around the world. We are live from Camp Virginia, Kuwait, embedded with Minnesota National Guard's 1st Brigade Combat Team, 34th Red Bull Infantry Division. My special guest today is Colonel Eric Kurska, commander of the 1st Brigade Combat Team. We've been in charge of the mission for over 90 days. 4,100 soldiers, 2,700 from Minnesota. The brigade already in 90 days has logged 1.4 million miles of vehicle travel, 1,000 missions under our belt. Hear from top military officials. Joining me now is Rear Admiral Kenneth Norton, U.S. Naval Forces Europe, Africa, Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategy, Resources, and Plans. It's great to be here. The Commanding Officer and the Executive Officer of the USS Minnesota, Commander John Fancher and Lieutenant Commander Craig Hempack. The USS Minnesota is a Virginia-class submarine. It's uh, 377 feet long, 34 feet in diameter, and uh, weighs just shy of 8,000 tons and Minnesota's leaders. Our special guest, Congressman John Klein. Great to be with you, Tom. The Commander-in-Chief of the Minnesota National Guard, Governor Mark Dayton. Mr. Governor, welcome to Minnesota Military Radio. Thank you. We're speaking with Congressman Tim Walls. I don't meet a single constituent in southern Minnesota that doesn't want this nation to do all we can for those folks. Minnesota Military Radio features first-hand accounts of events that change the world. Joining us now is retired Colonel Ed Nakasoni. I was having breakfast one day, that was December 7th, 1941, looking westward towards the mountains, and here I see beautiful formation of planes coming through Color Color Pass, and after that, going in down and attacking Schofield Barracks. Then they zoomed up again, came swooping down in Wheeler Army Airfield there, and started dropping bombs. And I ran into the house and said, wake up, wake up, everybody. Japan is attacking us, Japan is attacking us. From stories that inspire, Betty Wall Strophus audaciously served her nation during World War II as a woman Air Force service pilot or WASP. I had a love affair. He was a flying farmer and he came down to see me in Texas and he said, now you saw you could fly those airplanes, now you come home and get married. I went in and told the establishment officer that I was resigning. She said, tomorrow morning I'm going to get you a ride in an AT-6. I got a ride in that AT-6. I came home, I called that boy up, I'm not coming home. <laughs> <laughs> he said, if you don't, I'm going to go home and marry somebody else. I said, you go right ahead we both lived happily ever after to moments in history that'll never be forgotten this week larry tillmans joins us he is a world war ii veteran and served as a clerk typist for general Patton's third army during the nuremberg war trials mr tillmans what would you say to the president of iran when he says that the whole idea of the concentration camps was made up just like eisenhower told the soldiers get it all out now because somewhere down the line somebody's going to say it never happened the Holocaust was evil, and evil will triumph if good men do nothing. To carry Minnesota Military Radio on your station, call 612-805-5769 or email ben at minnesotamilitaryradiohour.com. And log on to minnesotamilitaryradiohour.com to learn more about the show. This is Tom Lyons, and I hope you will find a way to make a difference in someone's life this week.